Um, I didn't really have a plan set in place for this week's video because, frankly, I just didn't know everything kind of got away from me with everything concerning the Charlotte shooting last week, um, the Confederate flag issue going on this week and still persists, and sup the Supreme Court ruling on gay marriage kind of was something that I didn't really have a place to go with it. So I kind of, when it came time to film this video, I was just like, ah, oh, fuck. And so, forgive me if this video ends up being short, forgive me if it ends up being long, forgive me if it just ends up being a blithering, babbling you know, like what I'm doing now. <laughs> but uh, sometimes I think it's just great that you guys get to see the get to see the the side of me where I'm just stuck and don't know where to even fucking go and just see the real life idiot that I really am. <laughs> I think you guys deserve every once in a while to see you know the the real the real Nick and everything like that and just go with that. You know, it just... Sometimes I think videos work better that way. Because it proves that I'm not just some asshole that's ranting about different things and constantly, you know, talking about, you know, gay marriage or talking about marijuana, which actually I don't really do much anyway. I should, though, a little bit more, considering all things considered, but, um, and just a lot of different things, you know, and, and then a lot of people just see sometimes the, the asshole that's, um, that's ranting to people on, sometimes on Twitter or YouTube, and, you know, there, there's a greater sense to me than that, I mean, I really, at the end of the day, I'm just, you know, this don't I'm just this bitch donut with crazy sprinkles wrapped around the creamy center of raging arrogant a hole. I understand. You know. He's an idiot but amazingly self aware. But anyway. Uh, thank you for the inner idiot popping out of me. Um and so yeah, every once in a while I just think you guys deserve to just have me ramble off a bunch of shit and just watch me make a fool out of myself on camera and that's what this is basically gonna be just me babbling and going on and on and on <laughs> and making a complete ass out of myself cause yeah I really didn't have a clue what to do for this because I mean everything just took up so much of my time this week so yeah and not only that, I'm single again, just for the record. Um, it's so... There's been a lot of things going on. And... Um, I guess the only real thing that I really wanted to talk about, really, as I was getting ready to do this video, was... To, much like how you guys get to watch me, you know, have a brain aneurysm over the lack of preparedness I have this week... I got to watch a whole bunch of conservatives and right-wing extremists and fascists and evangelicals and all kinds of other idiots and assholes get all bent out of shape over gay marriage being being legalized. And, you know, it, it's amazing that even the people that have fucking lost have pretty much watched everything they fought against just be shit on completely and have the biggest fucking strokes I've ever seen. Like, I've seen, like, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and Rick Santorum and, you know, Sean Hannity and just all these people lose their fucking shit. <laughs> over the gay marriage ruling and it's incredibly entertaining 
normally I get pissed off over a lot of these right-wing assholes trying to, you know, oppress the, continue to oppress the LGBT plus community and oppress sexual and reli other religious minorities. But this week, and pretty much from now on, we can hold, you know, hold our heads up proudly and say, we fucking beat your ass. We fucking creamed you, no pun intended, we fucking creamed you in one of the biggest social movements in modern history. It took a lot of years coming, it took a lot of backlash and criticism and, you know, and being made fun of and all the, the words and, you know, derogatory remarks and all kinds of other shit that came along with it, the, the stress and the, you know, you know, cr even crying ourselves to sleep at night sometimes, you know, or going to bed extremely fucking angry, all of that is, you know, is, is a battle fucking, a huge battle fucking won. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a long way coming this is a long way coming and there's still a lot more progress to be made but this is a huge hurdle that is just that, that is wonderful to say and after all and as I said in my Supreme Court uh, ruling video that I put out a couple days ago there, it, this is a movement that I can look back on personally and I don't know about anybody else but me personally I can look back on it with such immense pride because I have donated, I have given my time to do videos and stuff like that. I have fought for LGBT plus equality since I was fucking, hell, since pretty much the days that I pretty, pretty much got involved in politics. And you have to consider way back in the day, like 2008, I had some pretty... I had some actual right wing leading leaning views to be honest I had some actual like I would say libertarian views and I actually didn't I was raised in kind of a conservative environment a rather conservative environment where gay marriage was kind of seen as this it wasn't necessarily because of religious issues so much as it was just the the idea that my family didn't recognize it and they didn't understand it and they didn't and they basically raised me with that assertion that you know that it's all a bunch of you know all a bunch of freaks and stuff like that and sadly I was indoctrinated and believed in in a lot of that crap and then about right after I started getting involved in politics and actually started researching things and getting involved in, in a lot of actions and stuff like that, my views actually began to move towards the left. And I became very liberal in my early day, political days. Um, hell, when I was 18, my the first thing that I did was when I was... Because I had just turned 18 and I had this immense sense of pride because now I was an adult I could vote you know I could uh, you know join the military not that I had any intention to doing so but I could join the military and do whatever I wanted and there was just this great sense I guess if you could call liberal nationalism that I had and liberal patriotism and constitutionalism and all this this great political and bourgeois bullcrap that I was I was just so fucking indoctrinated in, and my but my views had begun to, you know, had become to move. And so when I was about eighteen, I joined the Democratic Party, and obviously being liberal at the time, Democrat, everything else, I supported Obama. <laughs> I vote, I you know. I voted for, I was, but I got involved and I, and I began, and I really began looking at LGBT plus individuals with an entirely different light. You know, my mind really opened up and I began to really get behind a lot of progressive causes because I felt that those were right and I be believed in, I, I believe, just believed in equality. I mean, 
from, from the very early, even when I didn't even give a shit about politics, and was early on in my, you know, early on in my, even my conservative days, I still believed in racial equality, I still believed in, you know, in everybody being treated as equal that was, um, that was, whether, regardless of their religion or anything else, the only thing that was hypocritical of me was the fact that I didn't believe in in gay marriage or anything like that at the time. But I guess in a sense, though, I I believe I guess I believed in civil unions and certain things like that. And but I also didn't understand enough about it. And then I started, you know, doing my own independent research, you know, all kinds of crap, and it and it really helped to give me a good moral center and it's again not that I was raised in a religious household or anything like that because for the most part my I was raised by grandparents and my grandfather wasn't like over religious in fact to be honest I think my grandfather was atheist and but he never really spoke about religion. He, but he studied religion, and he believed in everybody really getting along, you know, to to some degree of equality. I don't know to what extent that actually went. I will never probably know. But I know that he was that he had some pretty, I would say, libertarian views in the concept of it today. Because my grandfather may have actually been conservative, but he wasn't one of those like right wing fucking extremists that we see today. In fact, my grandfather viewed the Tea Party, I think, as a bunch of radical nutcases, and that probably would have, you know, if may he rest in peace. But if he was alive today, I'm pretty sure that would be the one. A very few things that we would have probably agreed on because he did not really he, he kind of I think he kind of thought the Tea Party would have just quietly just died out because he saw it as nothing more as really a just kind of this little movement and stuff like that but then apparently as it kind of gained steam and stuff like that you know I think his I think at near the end also he kind of began to open up a little bit more like I did and I don't know it's one of those things that's personal and it's something that I kind of am still figuring out and probably won't fully understand about him because my grandfather was a complex person my grandmother is a moderate pretty much and she, she's socially liberal but she's also very fiscally conservative so my grandmother is pretty much moderate I guess and but I was never raised in a religious real environment and so I think that has a lot to do with why and I think for a good reason and I think it was always for a good reason because you know it left me with the idea of being able to pretty much think for myself and pretty much from the get go that's what my family really wanted they just wanted me to think for myself and and figure it out on my own and i think that's really the best way that people can do it you know i see people that want to indoctrinate their kids into this you know fascist theology you know of right wing you know radical fundamentalism and and political extremism and it's like i, I kind of think that's tantamount to child abuse I mean children are just they're, they're kids and they really should be raised you know to think for themselves it's like you can teach them you know about Jesus you can teach them about you know this and that but you know teach them also about other religions and teach them about other political views so that and you know let them you know run around with other kids and be involved in different things and let them just fucking grow up and have a normal fucking life instead of being you know, instead of being indoctrinated into into some you know right wing ideology and stuff like that and corrupting their minds because if we actually look at it a lot of kids that are raised that way that are raised that sheltered and everything like that they end up going down really dark paths, and it's really kind of sad that right-wing 
you know, nut jobs don't get that. So, you know, anyway, getting, I'm getting off topic, but I guess I don't really care because this is just a video to do one for the week. Um, my views basically after I became really liberal and stuff like that, I ended up, you know, obviously get uh, started reading more into ph political philosophy, political theory, political science, political ideologies, and I, I just, I really just started doing a lot of independent research. You know, I graduated high school, I went straight into college, I not that I really gave a shit about school at that point, because I was sick of it, which is funny, because I was still studying a lot of things, but I was just, I just was sick of it. And so, you know, I was kind of really studying a lot of different things, and then I think it was about 2011 that I started really becoming radicalized because um, I actually then started because I actually did start reading the Communist Manifesto and I actually started reading you know works of like the works of Lenin and I started reading the you know works I, I started reading works of Mao a little later but you know that came along too and I just kind of started reading a whole bunch of these different things, whether they were from, you know, whether they were communist, you know, sort of readings, or whether they were just progressive readings in general. You know, I read a lot of different things. I did a lot of internet research, you know, because I was always raised with that sense that communism and socialism are this evil sort of thing, and that, you know, it was, you know, why we were, in, you know, all about how you know, we were at war with, um, in a cold war with Russia and, you know, having to fight against the, the communist, you know, the communist empire, which looking back is so fucking ironic, but it's, you know, the, all, I just kind of was raised in that Americanized indoctrination of everything. And, you know, it was through reading a lot of that stuff that I really kind of, that my views started to they slowly became became went from being that liberal sort of thing to being sort of the I would call the revisionist socialist sort of ide ideals. So I became kind of that what I would call a liberal socialist or a social democrat. And it was yeah, I, that went on for a little while, and then I think finally in. I think in 2012 I ended up voting for Jill Stein, who was part of the Green Party, because I joined the Green Party late earlier in that year. And then I think it was about right after that, like 20, early 2013, that I just made the full leap to uh, communism, to, to Marxism, Leninism, and and got into reading Mao and stuff like that. And that was, and of course, you know, I listened to a lot of different um, different socialist uh, YouTubers and stuff like that, like Scottish Socialist and Jason Unruh, um, and it just started to mold me over time. And that's, and I think, and ultimately, it's just gotten me to where I've been now. And. I also think that it wasn't just the fact that I read into a lot of things and that I watched these different commentaries and stuff like that and just, I think it was just the whole fact that I was just fed up and I knew that there had to be something more than just this two-party, you know, liberal, conservative bullshit as well as the fact with the growing right-wing extremist and fundamentalist movements and people that were so ardently against gay marriage and everything that it just pushed me further and further away from the right. And I just, you know, so really, you to all the right-wing extremists that want to blame, you know, blame liberalism and, you know, they want to bl blame... blame uh, you know, socialist propaganda and all that sort of crap, you actually really have nobody to blame but yourselves for my radicalization because you, your fucking Tea Party movement was what pushed me away from, further away, and even still today pushes me further away from the right wing. 
It's why I remain so bitter and angry and pissed off and, and, and just disgusted and why I really am so anti-conservative because, you know, it, it's movements like the Tea Party. It's people like evangelicals who really are not only just in my mind, but in due to even from DO, you know, DOD reports, are the number one threat to America. And I really just, yeah, I'm just ardently opposed to a lot of that crap. And it's that 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 radical rightism that that has pushed me further away from any of that and frankly even further away even with liberal you know, from white liberals who fucking get behind you know certain things but then show their own hypocrisies and go full right wing themselves it really just also pushes me away from that too and it, it's just I, I think it's more the fact it, it's just how how inherently I would say actually conservative the bourgeoisie has actually become and I think that's one of the reasons for that for my transformation to uh, Marxist Leninism Macedon thought so yeah and it took a and while it doesn't seem like that's a long period of time and stuff like that you have to consider that when I was 18, well, when I was 16, I was libertarian and more, and probably leaned more on the conservative side, like the liberal conservative side. And now, and then when I was 18, I became very liberal, and now I'm almost 24, and I'm, um, and I, in, and I am proud, I am comfortable, and I am act, and pretty much pretty ardently marxist leninist Mao Zedong thought and I have no problem saying that I'm a Marxist, that I'm a uh, or a marxist leninist or a marxist leninist Maoist or a communist or whatever like that. I have no problem saying that. I've, you know, not that I've ever really had an issue, you know, with what people thought of me for the different views that I had, but it's just you know, it's just that I felt more comfortable in my personal, in my personal skin about that. You know, it's, and I'd actually like to make a fair comparison that you know, no matter what political ideology or religion you are, once you've become comfortable with something, it's kind of like how people who are trans, for instance, feel like they were born in the wrong, you know, they were born at the wrong gender, and they, um, and they, you know, make the, um, they make the, the transition to, uh, to, you know, from either male to female, female to male, whatever the case may be, but they make the transformation to become, you know, to, to feel, basically to feel more comfortable in their skin, and then once they've made those transformations, they actually feel a lot more comfortable than what they were. And I have to say that that's kind of how I feel when it comes down to whether it's my political views, whether it's my religious, my newfound religious views and everything like that. I feel more comfortable with who I am. Now, granted, I'm still settling in, you know, to this day into my, my religious views and stuff like that from being, being originally rather agnostic atheist and now moved on to um, Wicca and paganism I feel much more comfortable with, with who I am and I'm actually for the first time in my life really comfortable with the person that I am because I was always very insecure I was very you know I had a lot of different issues you know that plagued me and now I actually you know don't mind whether I'm single or in a relationship. I feel more confident in myself. I feel, you know, I have no problem getting up and speaking to people anymore. Um, I think YouTube's also helped with that. But um, I've gotten up and I've actually done a lot. You know, I, you know, I've actually found a lot more confidence and self-worth in who I am as a person. And... You know, if we look at people who are LGBT, 
in the LGBT plus, uh, they are, you know, basically, they feel the same way. I just really feel like I'm more comfortable with the person that I am, you know. I'm, I used to ha have a lot of these different little identity crises and stuff like that when it came down to things. And now I actually can proudly say that, yeah, I'm, you know, while I'm still settling into my religious views, I know, you know, I actually have a, you know, a fate, a higher power, higher powers, if you want to even go that far. Um, but I have a faith. I actually am very comfortable in, you know, where I am. I'm, you know, you know I'm not afraid to say that I've, you know, I'm not afraid to say that I've come out of the broom closet. I'm not afraid to say that I've, I've come out of the red closet, you know, the hammer and sickle closet. You know, the the only closet that I'm not in or have ever been in has been the closet, because I'm fully, you know, comfortable with the person that I am. You know, and I I've also gotten to the point where, though I am a straight male, I don't really like the label. I've gotten so progressive in my views with LGBT plus equality that I don't really like even labeling myself as straight. I just like referring to myself as a human being, as a, as a humanist at the very most, because, you know, any, you know, people can, you know, can be labeled as gay, straight, bi, lesbian, pansexual, transgendered, um, uh, intersex, asexual, anything, you know, along those lines, but ultimately all we are is human beings, you know, and with the recent Supreme Court ruling, I kind of have to definitely say that this is our stepping stone to not only view, it's no, I no longer view it as just gay marriage or same-sex marriage. I view it now that it's legalized in all 50 states, not that I haven't really had a differential anyway, but now we can just simply call it marriage. And I know that is sending off the fucking, you know, alarm bells in the right wing spectrum right now. I can, because, you know, I can already hear, you know, even before this video has been uploaded, I can already hear your anuses slapping shut. You know, I can already fucking hear the conservatives bitching, go, going, no, it, it's gay marriage and it's a abomination and it, 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 it infringes upon your my marriage and it it, it, it it violates traditional marriage and it's like it doesn't violate anything it doesn't infringe upon your religious views or your marriage in fact the only way that it can infringe upon your marriage or cause any sort of problem with you at all is if one you're gay or two if you actually, you know, or you have basically a moral crack in your own religious fervor, or both. I mean, frankly, the people that are so ardently anti-gay probably either are, you know, covering their own, you know, insecurities because they themselves might either have homosexual tendencies and are afraid to, you know, come out, or they might even, you know, or have, you know, a problem with their own uh, morality in their Christian, in their Christendom, or both. Frankly, I mean, it's not even hard to say, go that much further to say that they're not only, you know, anti-gay because they're homosexual, and you know, they're having reservations about their, you know, their Christian beliefs, but you know, it's the fact that they actually could have both. It, you know, I mean, look at um, look at all the people that have been so ardently that have either co um, come out as gay or have even become atheist because of f Christian fundamentalism and all that crap. I mean, for instance, the Reverend Ted Haggard that fucking you know that you know had a homosexual experience and stuff like that, and then ended up going to treatment to to you know, be cured of his gayness and all that bullshit, you know, or the, you know, the guy that, the 
what was it, the, the politician that tried to solicit sex in an airport bathroom, or even down to uh, Nathan Phelps, who left the Westboro Baptist cult, be, you know, because he just had realized that the, the, it, it was insane, and he's now an, a freaking atheist. You know, people who that fear their power being taken from them or feel like they're the people that fear their their power being eroded away the people that fear their hegemony being taken away that fear their you know the boot of oppression that they have being kicked out from underneath them are the ones that usually try to oppress you know further oppress people they try to you know you know physically verbally emotionally hurt people they really step up their antics and they essentially not only try to they just try to clinch tighter and tighter to their to those reins of power but they also clinch tighter and tighter to their religious beliefs until eventually one day that shatters around them that they they have no that they've reached the point that they can't go any further with their tight grip and they just realize how stupid they fucking are and either one become completely go the complete opposite direction politically and even religiously or they fucking commit suicide frankly those that actually you know not that i'm saying that it's a pussy way out or anything because i don't like to say that about suicide but when it comes down to people that are that clinch so tight to their political and religious leanings that have oppressed people for so long and off themselves i really have no sympathy for them but the people that actually do finally wake up to the realization that they were so fucking idiotic and stuff like that and give up those those fundamentalist religious views and those you know extremist political views and take up an actual an actual decency in politics or and or religion those are the people that actually have redeeming qualities because they actually have this because that in my mind is what is, is true repentance that's what's true you know uh, forgiving and forgiveness and all that sort of, that that's what makes you a, a good person and if you believe in a heaven and a hell I personally believe that that is what truly will grant your you know everlasting happiness in the afterlife but if you continue to hold on to your pathetic extremist and religious views then frankly there is a special place reserved on the lake of fire for you so which i find ironic in their sense considering that they're the ones that are always trying to say that we're the ones going to hell but yeah it's just the whole fact over this whole issue over gay marriage and stuff like that i find it to be a huge fucking victory you know i find you know Again, the war is not won, but the battle definitely sure is. The, you know, I mean, to, the fact that not only have I come a long way politically and everything else, but it's just that the fact that I've given to so many great causes, I've given to human rights campaigns, Southern Poverty Law Center, Amnesty International, um, God, I, I, those are just to name a few. I mean, I've gotten certificates of appreciation from these groups and that really feels good that that really feels good because i know that i'm making helping to make a difference that i'm giving money and i'm giving um and i'm giving support and i get involved in these groups and clubs and stuff like that and organizing with my community to help bring equality to people that have been horribly oppressed for so long now it's one of those things where obviously that it's good for the LGB community, somewhat good for the trans community, but also for the trans community, there's a lot of progress that's going to have to be made. But much like how the LGB movement was for a number of years now, I think we're starting to finally see this cusp of things come you know, radically changing for the trans community. I mean, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, um, the uh, Audrey that's on Big Brother um, and all these different little things that uh, um, have come up 
you know, the, this, this real vast um, array of, of pride in the trans community and this vast array of support for the trans community has uh, really actually just really been st- being has been rolling in and I actually think that the, the, and that's actually a good thing so the LGB movement while it has definitely had a lot of its own you know turbulent times and has had its a lot of its recognition given and it's had its battles won now it's time to really focus on other people of the com- of the community you know of for the trans individuals for, for the trans community for the asexual community for the intersex community pansexual community um, you know just all these different groups because the big battle for the LGB movement has been won now granted there's still again still progress to be made but this opens a great door for us to now begin to fight for the rights of other individuals and focus on other parts of this community to help progress their movements forward and help gain them their rights and their, you know all this sort of stuff because frankly trans trans rights and everything has been set as been left kind of in the dark for, you know at least 20 to 30 years and it really has you know need needs a lot of progress to be made to even even catch up with the LGB movement and so I'm really so I, I see this not only as an opportunity you know a great victory but an opportunity for you know other members of the community and as a supporter, as an ally, I will continue to support and donate money to make sure that these causes are carried out, that these causes are won, so that we can see even greater victories, much like what we just saw on Friday, happen in the future. In the meantime, as well as the fact that we also could just watch the right-wing extremists lose their shit and have strokes and brain aneurysms and topple over and die. But... <laughs> Frankly, it's just, uh, I'm just absolutely thrilled uh, with all this because one day I get to look to the next generation and the generation after that, and it, like I can actually, one day when my older sister is old enough to understand this sort of stuff, I can actually look to my sister and say, I, you know, it's like when she's reading about it in history class and things like that, I can say, you know, look to her and say, yo, sis, I was part of this movement. You know, I was part of a group of people that stood up for these, for these individuals' rights, that I donated money, that I actually did videos and stuff like that on this old thing called YouTube, because I imagine by that point, YouTube will have faded into obscurity by then and I'll probably be on some other video sharing site or social media site or something like that long in the future but anyway uh, but yeah that I used to do videos and I used to donate and I used to organize with my community and I was involved in all these things it's like that right there sis that's what equality is that's America right there that's what you know fighting for freedom is and I really can, you know, it's going to be one of those things where I, I'm proud to be able to look back on, on, on this moment right now, look back on this moment of history and say that I was a part of it. And, you know, that makes me, you know, that, that, that gives me a, a sense of, of great pride and great, you know, a sense of accomplishment. And maybe a little bit of sense of arrogance, but it's definitely something that I'm really proud to have been a part of and continue to be a part of. And so, yeah, it's been a long time coming. My views have radically changed. America has radically changed. The world is radically changing. You know, people are becoming more aware, more educated more understanding and more accepting of not only LGBT plus equality but for a lot of different ideals 
And for those that continue to try to oppress those ideals and continue to try to oppress pro uh, progressivism and try to oppress, you know, minorities and stuff like that, you're going to fade into obscurity. You really have to, it, it's kind of one of those real simple things. If you don't, you know, if you don't basically, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the phrase is, but it's basically that if you don't catch up with the times, times are going to leave you, are going to leave you behind. And essentially that is what's going to happen. I mean, these people who don't get with the times are doomed to be, you know, left in the dust of history. And really, whether they join, you know, join the rest of us in solidarity and acceptance and tolerance and stuff like that, I really could care less. Because whether they join up or not, they're still going to be looked at as the people, you know, when all of us are saying but I was a part of this great movement and then they look to you even if you've radically changed your views by then they'll look to you and say so what about what did you do I and then they all they basically have to sit there going well um, um, it was a different time and um, and basically make you look like an extreme fucking stupid jackass so the point being is that you pretty much you kind of had a shot to change your ways and stuff like that but people that you know have been so ardently opposed and still so, are so ardently opposed to gay marriage and all that you in about 40 years you're going to look like complete jackass in fact in about 10 years 20 years you're going to look like extreme fucking jackasses in fact, I'd even go so far to say is that you're already you already look like extreme jackasses, because we've entered a new era, we've entered this great age of progressivism and new ideals and everything else, and yet y'all just can't seem to accept defeat. Y'all can't seem to just grasp the situation that you're that you that you've lost, and there ain't a goddamn thing you can do about it. I mean, I see all these right-wing extremists, you know, lunging and grasping for something to cling on, to desperately cling on to, because they're falling, you know, you know, they're free-falling and they can't find anything to grab on to. They're looking for any little loophole, any little crack, any little thing that they can get away with this, the legalization of gay marriage, and they can't. And even if they do find it, it's going to be fought against. They're, they're going to be fought against tooth and nail. There's not a goddamn thing they can do about it. And I think the best way I've described it with other people is that you've lost. Get over it. Deal with it. The Supreme Court has ruled. It is the law of the land. And you have to accept it whether you believe in it or not. You can personally be against it, but understand you have to accept the law of the United States. Because going against it is pretty much almost tantamount to treason. It's being very un-American. And for those that so much so praise the great ideals of America, you seem to now be more becoming more anti-American than anything else and more radically Christian. And you have to understand America was founded on secularism and was founded on the separation of church and state. In, a, in other words, you know, y people now have a right to get married regardless of their, of their sexual orientation just as much as you have a right to be a fucking bigoted asshole. But at the same time, you're still a bigoted asshole, and you're going to look, be looked down upon by the rest of the community. So, just understand that, and that you are slowly being left in the dust of history. You know, essentially, I can see nothing more out of these radical rightists than them basically becoming pretty much the successor organizations of the Westboro Baptist Church. I mean, 
to be honest, I can would even go so far to say that these fundamentalist Christians and right-wing political extremists are pretty much going to become kind of like how the Klan and a lot of these neo-Nazi groups are. They're really just going to become these little minuscule, you know, little fragments of society that no one really pays atten attention to. They remain, you know, obviously terrorists and threats like that, but they're, you know, they're not really going to be taken seriously by the greater, you know, by the greater population of the United States, you know, because I really see not only just the political landscape and everything else transitioning towards a more, you know, a more better era, you know, more enlightened and accepting era, but I also see religion going that way too. I really see a lot, I mean, a, a lot of people that do remain Christian have taken up much, much more of a enlightened view. They've taken up, you know, a much more common sense of decency and morality and have distanced themselves away from those those fanaticists. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. And I frankly, you know, am finally glad that we can raise, you know, raise the you know, rainbow flags and ra raise the U.S. flags and everything like that in proud solidarity that we actually defeated extremism in a huge fucking battle. You know, and of course, you know, you watch these evangelicals go talking about how, you know, that this is a threat, you know, and a, to their religion and this is a, you know, a, a slap in the face to God. And it's like, I think the slap in the face to God came when you fucking decided to be a bunch of bigots and go against the very, you know, foundations of what your God intended, which was to accept all people, love thy neighbor, and pretty much to, you know, pretty much to be tolerant to all pe forms of people, you know. I mean, even your friggin' Savior even talked a whole bunch of you know, that sort of stuff about being tolerant and, you know, loving and caring and not judgmental, you know, but apparently y'all completely fucking missed that part, so, yeah, and, you know, the fact that it's a threat to your power, how, a threat to, to Christianity, how, the only thing that's going to happen is that gays and lesbians and bisexual, all, all these different individuals are going to get married the world's not going to implode it's not going to end people are just now going to get married just like the rest of us ha have all had the privilege of you know the equal human fucking rights you know and not only that the fact that the gay population seems to the gay and lesbian population seems to have a higher rate of marriage success than straight couples i kind of also make the argument that traditional marriage has also kind of failed if you don't mind me actually saying that um so tradition you know to continue to support traditional marriage yeah well it was also tradition to beat your fucking wife and you know and it was also tradition to you know that you know, you could also marry your fucking half sister, but those sort of things all faded out. It faded out at some point in history. You know, it was also tradition that, you know, in order for a woman to be married, she had to, you know, be of pure, you know, of virginity, which is just a insane fucking concept. You know, it's kind of a, a ludicrous concept in my personal opinion. But it's also the fact that, you know, it also used to be tradition that if a woman wasn't of, of virginity, that, you know, there had to be some sort of, you know, that there was certain different things. That women that, that were promiscuous had to be stoned. Like, stoned to death. I mean, we fade, phased out stoning in our, moder in our modern industrialized society. You know, it, it's... It was also tradition and part of the whole ideals that you had that uh, that you couldn't eat uh, uh, that you couldn't eat like fish or something like that. 
that you couldn't drink the water because it was unsanitary, so people drank beer or wine. You know, it, it's things like that that just faded out and that don't really fit the modern concept. And just like that, the insane notion that you're so anti-gay because supposedly homosexuality is this great sin is a faded, obscure fucking concept that should have been left to back you know, about 2,000 years ago. Not only that, we look at the whole idea that Jesus died for the si for your sins, and, you know, so basically, if homosexuality was a sin and all that sort of stuff, he died already, and that thus everybody's sins have been absolved. So basically, by being so anti-gay and saying, you know, that this is a sin, that's a sin, you know, you shouldn't be doing is basically trying to say that Jesus died for nothing. So basically, by being such an anti-gay bigot or being just a fundamentalist Christian, you're pretty much slapping your own savior in the face. So, there's a little something to marinate on. But, yeah, I'm... I don't know, I'm just extremely proud of what's happened this week. And wow, I actually really can't believe that I've spoken this long. Um, but I told you guys it was going to be a babbling sort of thing going on. But yeah, I think I've hit about 50-some minutes, so we're. I think that might be okay for this week. Um, and I'm pretty much done with my spiel. So... Thank you guys for listening this week. I'm hoping that y'all are as proud as you can. If you're an anti-gay fundamentalist bigot, then fuck, go fuck yourself. But thank you for watching anyway. Thank you for the views. Um, and, um, yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement. And this has been NorCal Corn. Peace, guys.